I'm I'm getting older you know though. Oh, I am. Maybe I'm 19. You don't know. I don't know. Exactly. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you you're you're telling me I'm old. <laughs> you're telling me I'm a child. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he's going to talk about how he's never going to use an LRM, and he's going to tell you a bunch of new stuff. It's going to be amazing. Please welcome. Yay! Hi, folks. Thank you. Thank you for so. Uh, Wait, sorry. What? What did you forget? So I forgot one thing that's actually really important. There are two tracks from now on until lunch. Oh, there is another track, and the, the other one is more interesting than mine. So go ahead. Very important to say, which is literally the only thing I had to say. <laughs> okay, please clap for Matteo again, otherwise it's gonna be awkward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. You're so, very uh, so very well, first of all, follow me on Twitter, so that that's out of the way. Okay, uh, who I am, why I'm here, why it's uh, uh, you should not listen what I say. Anything? My software is on your computer. Okay, it's uh, at this point in time I can roughly say that with 17 billion downloads on npm, what I maintain is in your computer, if you use Node, and all developers have Node installed or Electron or VS Code or whatever. So at this point, it's, it's, I, I am on your laptop, so whatever. Uh, you trust me with that. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, what I do, I'm part of the Nozest Technica Steering Committee. I created this framework called Fastify a few years back. I probably talked about it at this conference too. And um, pretty much also um, board member of the OpenJS Foundation, a bunch of other stuff. Founded a startup last, uh, last year. Uh, platformatic. We are going to talk a little bit about what it's about in this talk. So, um, but to be honest, let's start from back, back, back in the days. Uh, how many of you like uh, databases? Hey, you like databases? Uh, the one that don't like databases, you will have, you will have, we will have fun in this talk. So you probably <laughs> have heard about this of object relational mapping, right? In your in your in your lifetime, um, it's uh, uh, it is what it does. Okay. It's, uh, since it was invented in, in the 90s, it enables you to map a relational data model, your nice SQL database, to uh, uh, up to something called models. So you can model your, uh, your, uh, your code and your application in the, with the class person, or the class pet, or the class dog, or page, or category, or author, or whatever you're working on. And look, I've done so many courses at university, telling me exactly that. You need to map your data into classes and then use them to operate on it. Yeah, it, and the, everything will be fine and your code will be neatly organized and you have no technical debt at all. Yeah. Uh, then I, it, uh, I started working as, as, in, in Java as a, as a consultant. Um, Node was not a thing. Um, there was some Ruby on Rails a little bit at the time. And uh, um, so the question now is, is, how many of you did Java before? Oh, amazing, okay. So you know exactly what happens to your application when it uses an ORM, right? It hibernates. <laughs> okay, all the one laughing, uh, you, it's, okay. I'm sorry for all of you that didn't get it, but hibernate is the major ORM for, uh, for Java, and I'm not a fan. Um, so, uh, what does an ORM do for you and what kind of pattern encourages? You typically end up structuring your code with kind of a class that extends some kind of a modal object. And this typically has a few key responsibilities, okay? It uh, manages persistency, typically. And it integ also integrate, includes the relationship between the code. It does a lot, quite a lot of good things for you. Um, it also holds the data in memory so you can access those properties, right? That's the main thing for, for it, or not, okay? And finally, it oh, you actually encourages you to write the, your, implement your own business logic within the model, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about that. This pattern is called the FAT model. You can find it online, Google it up, and it's basically you get these gigantic objects that are your models, and you write your application using your, these models that interact with each other. I don't know if you many have worked with a code base built around those patterns, but in this kind of system, you typically have an MVC application, and an MVC, so you have your models, 
okay, your controllers, your ref framework that orchestrate it all. Uh, we call it MVC, but where is the view? Like, it's gone, okay? So now you have, uh, we only have the con your controller and your model, and you're structuring your applications with controllers and models. And every single time you need to add a new feature to your application, what do you do? Well, oh, I have two boxes, so I have two folders. One is the models folder, the other one is the control controllers folder or routes or what you want to call it. So, okay, I'm going to create some file in one of those two folders. Soon, you will have a model, a, a, an application with 2,000 models in it to maintain. <laughs> okay, I was, um, at some point, I was chatting with a, a, a fellow developer, and they were saying, oh, we have an application built on top of Mongoose, and uh, we have a few thousand models in a models folder, and it takes one minute to start. <laughs> a few people have seen this kind of code. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't scale well with complexity, okay? Especially when you start having a lot of teams working on the same code base. So, in fact, I would say that ORMs deliver a nice spaghetti bowl, not really the neat piece of code that they, they, told, they teach us in, in school. And, and by the way, I love my carbonara, so it's, I'm Italian. I love my carbonara. So um, a, few, uh, a few years back, I created this framework called, called Fastify, and it, you can use it in, the way, in any way you want, but it has this nice structure that you can create it, uh, your application use it, com composing it on top of plugins. And those plugins can be mostly independent piece of code that you can mount together, which is what it enables, you know, that kind of flexibility, so you don't have the gigantic 2,000 folder, you have this single box. You don't have two boxes. So instead of structuring your code around, oh, it's a controller or a model, let's structure our code in, oh, what kind of features I'm building in my application? So am I building the uh, order management system, or am I building the uh, product pages, or am I building the checkout, whatever? And I can structure these into, around using plugins and models and, and modules and box them by feature and have those features communicate via uh, known APIs, okay? Instead of, oh, I'm just relying on my network of relations in my database and my ORM to construct my graph for me. That will not work well in the long term. So this case, the structuring your application in this way actually scales well with complexity, which is what we deal all about today. We are writing a ton of bugs every day, okay? I, me too. So I, I put a pull PR uh, of 9,000 lines of code recently and then I'm still fixing the box. Uh, uh, it's the, the next step is uh, from there is, well, at some point, if my team grows too much, I might have to split into two multiple microservices to, uh, if I have multiple teams and stuff, probably better, probably better architecture. Needed, not needed, your, your choice. But Fastify enables to do you both of those things. So why all of this matters for ORMs and why all of this matters for you? Well, we covered the ORM and the MVC pattern that doesn't make much sense. But, you know, you, you probably go for it anyway. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the Pareto Principle, which was a mathematician in, 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 in the early, at the beginning of last century, fuzzy a little bit pers persona, but it, uh, it uh, theorized this, that 80% of the outcome result from 20% uh, of the causes. It's a very famous principle. Um, it was a little bit of a fascist, so but the, the principle is good, not, not the person. Um, and uh, he, uh, uh, basically, why does this even matter? Okay, you know, do, do you remember when, when this came out for the first time, the, the iPhone, the, the first thing? It, uh, um, they, they shipped without, the, uh, without copy and paste, because copy and paste was too hard to implement, so they shipped without it, okay? And this is why, this is the kind of effect of if you are in building a new system or something new, typically implementing, uh, 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 like you can ship um, quite a lot of features with a very tiny amount of effort, and at the same time, the last, le the last leg is going to kill you. I don't know, many of you have been strangled by this, this thing. You know, it's, you can get most of the features done, and then when you try to do them, you are kind of screwed. So, uh, uh, now, 
the, the Pareto principles have put some numbers on it, but they are completely, of course, uh, let's put it, throw up in the air. Okay, there is no statistical validation on that it's 80, 20, or 70, 30, or 60, 40. Does it make, okay, that, that, that was, let's pick a number, 42, okay, kind of thing. Um, so now, you can optimize your, your, your development with two things. You can either optimize with the, uh, you optimize your stack and your development for the start of the project, so that it's, you can ship uh, your 80% of the feature even faster, <sighs> but I need the last 20, and now it takes me forever, okay? And this is the problem of ORMs, okay? Typically, ORMs uh, eat you back when you, are, when you need uh, to start building the most complex features. Why? Because then you typically end up writing custom SQL or some custom shenanigans across five, four or five tables that, oh, and you wish, oh, why don't can't I just have a nice join here and just write my own SQL query and forget about things? So, um, typically, if, you, if what you will choose is, if I need to do a lot of the start of the project work, I typically cho choose a framework or a stack that will automate me all the repetitive work. And uh, uh, if I need, if I have a complex, very complex project, if I need to choose a framework or a tech stack, I'll typically choose something that will help me with the complex features. Typically, somebody will say, oh, my, my application is so custom that I just need to use Node Core because I can't use any web framework. Uh, I've done that. Then I build Fastify. So <laughs> that probably tells you something. Um, OK, so what ORM does is that they remove the easy part. Typically, you write your schema with migrations. If you're not using migration, you're probably doing it wrong. So please do the, use them. And uh, you want then to apply those migrations, okay? And then you need to set up the URLM because that needs to be set up, typically with some globals. I don't like globals. Uh, you need to write the models, write the routes, and then at some point you just throw it out all away because you need to optimize some SQL query and you just don't want to deal with the cost of the URLM and you just write everything from raw and you are regretting your life choices. So I have been, I've done all this cycle, okay? So I'm, I've reached that point. Um, so the, for me, the best line of code is a line of code that I don't have to type. By the way, I'm not, not sponsored by this company, but it's an amazing keyboard. So <laughs> Keychron. <laughs> not sponsored by them, but I love them. Uh, uh, um, so uh, when, I, when I'm building, a, I'm a CTO now, before I was a consultant. When I build, I recommend a company to build a backend. This is what I, ch what I look for it when I try to, to build it. So first of all, I want something that I can run locally on my machine. I don't, I'm sorry, I, a lot of you do cloud database or love cloud stuff, and uh, I am not a fan. I want something that I can run on my machine ideally without the internet, okay? Uh, uh, this is, it, it's such a much better development environment from how my brain works. I want something that I could essentially just uh, hack something very quickly with it. It's super flexible. I can just write my raw query as quickly as possible. Am I good with SQL? I was very good with SQL in the past. I wrote a SQL query that was printed down in, in size 12. It was this long from, 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 from the floor. Okay, um, yeah, that, uh, I've done some odd stuff in the past. And uh, um, probably not recommended, but still. That was fast, it was super fast. I want something that gives me some basic authorization support because no, I don't like implementing authorization. I, I, I don't know how many of you have implemented authorization systems, probably all of you at this point. They, they, they don't like, I don't like them. I want, uh, to some extent, something that I can decide last minute to change from REST and GraphQL because from time to time I like REST, from time to time I like GraphQL. And they make, both of them make sense. And uh, apart from also, how many of you like uh, uh, GraphQL? Okay, it, it matches my, my, my stats, okay? And uh, uh, I want something that does not require like any special function system uh, to, to be deployed. You can deploy it anywhere you want. So, um, I coded this thing multiple times in my life. And that company has coded this thing multiple times in my life. And uh, I just don't want to code it. I didn't want to code it anymore. So, and this is probably the part of where I do started a startup at some point because I want to have the cake and eat the cake at the same time, okay? I, I, want the, I want something that I don't have to code, but I want it done my way. So I decided to 
uh, to start platformatic for it, okay? With the intent to solve this exact uh, problem in the back, which is I want something that I can use to start the project at the beginning of the project, uh, and it's very simple to get started. You can ship an API in a matter of minutes. And at the other time, it's something that is super extensible, so I can just use all my node skills to extend it very quickly and add new REST routes, new um, GraphQL endpoints, whatever. So uh, this, is, uh, this system is called Performatic DB. It's, uh, this is the docs. We offer other tools as well, so it's not just this, this guy. Uh, but there are, uh, there are quite other a few things in there. And uh, um, the core idea is you set, you write your schema, you configure Platformatic, and you're off you go. And then when you need to uh, uh, write your, um, your custom SQL, you can just write your custom SQL without anything in between. So you just throw your custom SQL, and that's it, okay? Which is, uh, which is great. Um, how does it work? Well, you, you code your front end, use whatever you want. Um, use Remix or use uh, whatever. Uh, Next and uh, uh, Gatsby, I don't know. Gatsby, Gatsby. <laughs> and uh, uh, I use Svelte, whatever. Fine. Don't, don't. Svelte or Svelte? Svelte, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, so it's all based, this is all based on Fastify plugins, so you can actually use this, uh, use any of these components independently if you want, so you can just take a look at what our source code and just pick and, pick and choose if you want, but uh, it works very well in terms of uh, the, the stuff. I'm going to do a quick demo. You have a few more minutes, so I don't want to run late, but yeah. So here you go. So when you do stuff, you do uh, npm uh, create platformatic at latest, and it's going to, to start picking, generating stuff. You see we can choose a couple of things, DB or, or, or service. Service is a more made role component. It provides some developer exp nice developer experience. I'm creating a bunch of stuff, um, default migration, plugins. Uh, I'm not going to use TypeScript, okay? It takes a little bit more time to set up, so I'm just avoid it. I'm, also, I don't want to shame, my, shame myself on, on it. On stage, I'm not a super TypeScript fan. Well, I'm learning it. I bought uh, my Matt Pocket code uh, so, uh, the courses, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually learning it finally. You can put it on, on record. I'm learning TypeScript. <laughs> um, it's probably a bit late in the game, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, so it's installing dependencies. It's always this is a little bit of npm time. Uh, while we are doing it, let's start looking and what what we are in here. So here created a few things. We have a, our configuration file. Uh, platformatic db.json. It automatically handles this configuration file, automatically handles the, um, the, the, the environment variable substitution. So we have our database URL, we can configure stuff. And we have the plugin. The plugin is just a Fastify plugin. Okay. And uh, TypeScript is complaining because it's, it's, not, doesn't, it's, it's not run yet. So we are running the migrations now and we want to generate the types. So, um, oh, we're talking about Platformatic Cloud later, so I'm just not generating this. And here we go. So, uh, basically, we have deployed this, we have built this. So, npx plt uh, db start. And this is going to run. In the meanwhile, this has created a, a very basic schema with a table that generates an integer with a table movies with an internet and a, a title. And uh, this has started on 3042. So we can go into 042 and we have both OpenAPI and uh, Graphical deployed uh, already. So we have a few routes so you can get and post and do your things that you want. And um, uh, here, for example, we have uh, a little bit of a mutation to save a movie. And you see that we have saved the movie. And we can even uh, query the movie from, uh, from REST and uh, it will automatically uh, run and get me my, uh, my movie correctly after it. Um, it also supports subscriptions, so if, you're, if you need to get live updates and stuff, this is, um, it's, it's there. It has support for relations, authorization, and a bunch of other stuff. I, um, the nice fit, uh, what, what I like the most about all of this is the flexibility, okay? Because you, this is all built on Node, so I can actually just do, for example, app get and add a route for get a low. 
and, um, and then return a lower. And now I can curl localhost 3042. Actually, yeah, it's hello. And it, it, it has added automatically my route. Consider that this does all, uh, it's, uh, it has a nice live reloading thing happening in the background. So you, what you would have experienced with Next of other things. That's not super easy to get up on the back end too, but it all works. So it's, it's, it's good. And you see that this automatically restarted in the background and reloaded uh, everything. So um, it supports a bunch of other features. Check it, check it out. I, am, I have a few more minutes to, to go through a bunch of stuff. So, and here we go. Um, so, uh, as I said, these, uh, this is all uh, built around the con this concept of providing both something that can get you up and running very quickly and something that enable maximum flexibility on adding plugins and adding all the code in your, in your plugin system. It also supports TypeScript recompilation and all those things. Oh, I didn't show the types. So, it's, you could even do this kind of stuff here. So in here you go, it's in here. In here now you can, for example, do uh, app.get uh, titles. Okay, we want all the titles. And here you could um, uh, do const movies. You can await and call app uh, platformatic entities uh, movie, and um, it's do, 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 do. find, yeah, and I'm just yeah, not passing anything, and then return movies, map movie title, here we go, and this restarted, then I can go here and titles, and returns the titles of my movies, okay? It's all, it has all the auto-completion and stuff that you would expect. Where is the slides? Okay, cool, uh, three more minutes. You can also use this stuff in your own Fastify applications. It's all plugin-based, so it's just, it's just very easy to set it up. Um, um, I, Sarah, did I just quote an, uh, an oil run? <laughs> I don't know, okay. Um, so um, let me talk uh, a few minutes. Um, this week, we just uh, opened up to all Platformatic Cloud. You can take any Platformatic or Fastify application and get it deployed very quickly. It uh, um, provides all the things that you would expect from a modern hosting for Node.js. It does uh, uh, preview environments. You can connect it to your database and have even database uh, branches if your provider supports it. So we, we, there is a good guide for Neon uh, uh, for Neon and Postgres, but you could also hook it up with uh, Planet Scale. We are writing on the guide right now. It's pretty good if you, if you prefer My MySQL, and they're both great companies. I love them both. Um, and uh, um, part of this, it's uh, um, check it out. There is a few videos around, lurking around, so I will be at the at the bottom of of that and stuff, and uh, at the bottom ah, on the on the all after everybody. There is a table, no roll-up. We are a scrappy startup, so it's, uh, uh, the roll-up was, was, was hard. And uh, uh, so we just have a, a bunch of T-shirts, so come grab, come grab a T-shirt. And uh, um, that's, uh, that's kind of it, I think. Oh, I have one more minute, so I can show you something, some, some more stuff. Um, so it's, it's actually very easy to get um, a PLTDB migration uh, create, for example. And we are creating a new migration. And I can, oh, I need to reload this. Then I can do uh, create, oh, I can, let's, let's do a create table uh, quotes. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Copilot is always the best for demos, but it doesn't get anything. So I just didn't like it at all. So it, uh, uh, let's copy this stuff from here. And I just need this. I need like 55 seconds. Uh, primary key, and then I want the quote. I want the text. Okay, and I want the movie ID. Yay! Okay. So now, if I run this this migration, yeah. 
but more than one primary key. E, of course, okay. Great. Now I can, this should have live reloaded. So if I go back in here, we have in a reload my graphical, I can see that now I have the quotes, all the quote stuff too. And I can even, if I look at the movie, I can even walk through the full relationship of it. Um, last but not least, yeah, there is, uh, this is the cloud. So if you want to take a look, I can give you a nice walkthrough demo uh, after it. It's, uh, um, it's pretty nice. You have both uh, static environments and preview environments that you can, that you can check out. So um, yeah, thank you very much. And I'm out of time. So.